What is going on college sports fans? Welcome back to another video. Today we have my preseason college football power 35 rankings and we're doing these just like we do for college basketball every single week throughout the season and we do have our preseason ones here today. So make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new. These are my power rankings. It's not like my college football playoff rankings or my college football playoff predictions. We're gonna have that out as well soon where I make my college football playoff bracket predictions and fill it out for you guys as well. So make sure you guys subscribe, ton of content coming your way, and let's get into these rankings. All right, just like I do all my rankings, I'm gonna give you guys all of them all at once. My power 35 and also some honorable mentions. And we're gonna start right at the top. And really, Ohio State, Georgia, number one, number two, they're really 1A, 1B. I actually debated this with myself for a while on whether I wanted to have Ohio State or Georgia as my number one team in the country. And it really came down to, I was breaking down the position groups, who I think was better at where. And I think Ohio State, I was gonna put Georgia above Ohio State because I was like, okay, Georgia has the better quarterback, Carson Beck. I believe is better than Will Howard for sure. But I think Will Howard, he's a good enough game manager and he's a good enough on his legs to where he he's kind of one of those players, he's not a superstar, but you know he's going to be able to succeed with a good team around him. And I think Ohio State has the best surrounding cast in the country for a quarterback and I was debating this I was like Georgia probably might have the better defense than Ohio State as well but then I was thinking about it I'm not so sure that that's true Ohio State's defense was really really good last season I think they're only going to be improved this year I think their secondary is going to be much better I think their secondary is going to be better than Georgia's um their their front seven you could argue Georgia has the better front seven but it is close so I think that Overall, overall, Ohio State might have the better defense. I think they have the better skill position players for sure, which is running back, wide receiver, uh, tight end is debatable. Georgia probably has the better tight end. But yeah, overall, it's very close. If you guys wanted to say Georgia was the number one team heading into the season, I could for sure see that. And given the coaching with Kirby Smart, I think Kirby Smart's definitely a better coach than Ryan Day. I would not argue back at you if you wanted to put Georgia at number one, but given the talent on the field, not counting coaching, I would say Ohio State is the best team heading into the season for the preseason. So I have Ohio State. I think they have the most talent. They have two NFL running backs. They have a good offensive line, great skill player, uh, wide receivers coming. They always have first round wide receivers coming out of Ohio State. And yeah, they have a absolutely stacked team. Georgia, also a stacked team. Like I said, I wouldn't be mad if you had them at number one. I think Carson Beck is definitely a top three quarterback heading into the season. He had a fantastic year last season. And I think that he is going to be one of the front runners to win the Heisman this year as well. Coming in here at number three, this is where it kind of gets, you could say it gets a little bit controversial. A lot of people have Oregon at number three. I personally think Texas is better than Oregon, and I know that C.J. Baxter actually just got injured a couple of days ago in practice, and he's going to be out for the entire season, which is a big blow to Texas because I think he is actually a difference maker at running back, but I think Texas has a good enough offensive line, and they had good enough depth there at the running back position. They recruit really well. I think that they are still going to be super good in the run game, and I think all around offensively, Texas is still going to be really good. And I think, you know, defensively, I think Texas probably has the more talent on their team, and I think that they proved it more last year than Oregon did. And I know you could say Oregon, well, no more Bo Nix. They have Dylan Gabriel in there, and, and I would probably consider that an upgrade. Dylan Gabriel was probably better than Bo Nix, but I don't think Dylan Gabriel is better than Quinn Ewers. And ultimately, your quarterback's not like all it comes down to, but that is a huge part of football, and I think Quinn Ewers is going to make huge plays. And, and I know Dylan Gabriel played for Oklahoma last year, and he had a huge game against Texas last year, but Texas ultimately won more games. They made it to the college football playoff with Quinn Ewers. I think that he is going to have the better year this year, and I think Texas is 
I think preseason wise, I think they're a better team all around than Oregon. But it is very close. If you if you guys want to have Oregon at number three, I wouldn't be mad at you either. It's very, very close. I do have Oregon at number four. I think they have a ton of really good players at the skill positions. I think they brought in that wide receiver from Texas AM who's gonna have a big year for them. They brought in Dylan Gabriel. They they usually have a really good defense. Dan Lanning was the former defensive coordinator at Georgia. Now he's headed into year three at Oregon, joining the Big Ten Conference. It's going to be a big year for them. I think they're going to be super good. I think they're definitely going to be in the playoff, and I think they're going to be a top five team. Next up, Alabama at number five. Alabama, some question marks coming in for Alabama, and I'd say the top four are pretty solidified, and then after that, Bama, Michigan, Penn State, these teams, kind of that next level. But Bama, I would put above at the top team of that next level just because I think personally, I think Jalen Milrow is going to have a huge step up this year, especially with Kalen DeBoer. I mean, if you look at what he did with Michael Penix Jr., I think he could do a lot with Jalen Milrow. He has a ton of potential. I think he's a sleeper to win the Heisman because a lot of people looked at his season last year. They were like, hey, he's pretty decent, but he's 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 not a Tua. He's not a uh, Jalen Hurts. He's not a Bryce Young. But I think that he could get there just because Alabama had so many good quarterbacks recently, and, and he hasn't necessarily been that yet it doesn't mean he can't be I think Jalen Milrow is going to have a big year this year I think Alabama defense always shows up and I think Kalen DeBoer's offense that he's transitioning from Washington over to Bama is going to be explosive and it's going to be super fun to watch I think Alabama's top five team this year number six I do have Michigan and yes losing Harbaugh that's a big blow losing JJ McCarthy losing a lot of this offense it's going to hurt for Michigan, but that defense is here to stay. I think they have a top three defense in the country, probably up there with Georgia and Ohio State. And I think that they are still going to be, you know, contenders for the playoff 100% this year. I see a lot of people having them around like 9, 10, even as far as like 12 to 15 on some rankings I've just been seeing, you know, on Twitter, even like uh, ESPN and stuff has them a little bit lower than six, around like eight to nine. I think Michigan coming off a national championship, I know they lost a lot offensively, but they still have Donovan Edwards. They're still going to have a dominant offensive line. They're still going to have a dominant run game, and they're still going to have a top three defense in the country. So I had a hard time putting them any lower than number six. Number seven, I do have Penn State. Penn State's another team. They're going to have a really, really good defense this year. Drew Aller coming into his next year. He should improve a lot, try to uh, become one of the top quarterbacks in the country this year. They have a super good running back, Nick Singletary. I think he is going to be one of the best running backs in the country this year. And yeah, Penn State definitely a top 10 team. I got him coming in here at number seven. Number eight, we do have Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a team that I've seen a lot of people have above teams like Penn State, Michigan, and sometimes even even Alabama, which is surprising, you know, in their own conference there. But Ole Miss, they do have, you know, a, a fairly easier schedule. You know, no SEC schedule is really easy. But but given what other SEC teams drew in their schedule, they kind of got a little bit of a better draw than some of these other teams. And I, I don't really want to factor scheduling into my power rankings just because they're going to go 11 and 1 or something like that because they have an easier schedule doesn't mean I think that they're necessarily better than a Michigan in a head-to-head -head battle. Now they could be like six and eight. That's pretty close, but I don't believe they're better than Michigan, I, especially defensively. Their defense, I think it's a huge question mark. They're going to have to prove it to me first. I have them here at number eight. Number nine, I do have the Florida State Seminoles. I think the big question mark there is just DJU coming in there to Florida State. I think that he's going to have some success there. Now, do I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country? Probably not, but I'm not sure if Florida State necessarily needs him to. I think they're going to be a super good team all around this year, and they are losing some skill positions. They're losing Jordan Travis. I think it's going to hurt him a little bit, and they're not going to be as good offensively, but I still think they're going to be a super good team this year and very good defensively, very good defensive line. Clemson at number 10. This is a controversial one that I have on my list. I don't see very many people having Clemson in the top 10. I don't see very many people having Clemson even in top 15, or if they are, they're 14 or 15th. I have them up at number 10 because of that defense, 
because they are in year two of Garrett Riley as the offensive coordinator, I think that these things take time. If you look at uh, the Ohio State defensive coordinator, he came over from Oklahoma State after they won a Big 12 championship with him. He did not have that great of a first year. Then in his second year as D.C. last year, he improved that Ohio State defense a lot. I think Garrett Riley struggled in the first year. He had freshman quarterback Cade Klubnick. Um, you know, they were forcing the ball a little bit to Will Shipley. No more Will Shipley, which I don't necessarily think is a negative. I think, you know, it could be a positive, uh, be a addition by subtraction type of situation here. Because Will Shipley's not on the team anymore, it could actually help this offense. And that's kind of crazy to say, but I'm just not necessarily a huge fan of Will Shipley. I think he's overrated. And Garrett Riley's year two of being an offense coordinator, uh, Cade Klubnick coming back. I don't think Cade Klubnick, same thing as I said for DJU at Florida State. I don't think he's going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the country, but do I think he can improve upon last year and, and have a better season with another year with Kate, uh, with uh, Garrett Riley as the offense coordinator? Yes, I think Clemson, definitely a sleeper this season. I think that not too crazy for me to say that they could win the ACC this year. Next up at number 11, I do have the Missouri Tigers. Missouri is a team that out of nowhere kind of had a really good year. Yes, they kind of had the players. They've been getting some better recruits, um, but I don't think anybody expected them to have the year that they did last year, and now they have a lot of high expectations. Returning Brady Cook, returning uh, Luther Burden, high-powered offense. I'm super excited to watch them play, and I think no doubt they're top 15. I got them up here at number 11. Number 12, I do have Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame, interesting. Actually, earlier this week, they did lose their left tackle to injury. He's going to be out for the year. I think that's actually a pretty big blow considering they lost Joe Alt to the NFL draft. He was uh, a top five pick, went number five, and now his replacement is out for the season. So now they're getting deep in their left tackles, which is a very important position, especially for a scrambling quarterback like Riley Leonard. And that's another thing. Riley Leonard, I think, is a clear downgrade from Sam Hartman. Now, um, I don't think Riley Leonard is bad. I just think that he's slightly overrated for what he did at Duke. I think Mike Elko was a super good coach. I think Riley Leonard's a decent player. I, I, I just don't think he is the top quarterback that a lot of people are, are making him out to be. But we will definitely see. I still think Notre Dame's going to have a fantastic run game, a fantastic defense. And we'll see if that left tackle uh, position hurts them here at all this season. Next up, I do have LSU. LSU is a team that, another one of those teams, I think they're going to have a super high-powered offense. Um, definitely question marks on the defense. I think that defense needs some rebuilding. They got some standout guys on defense like Harold per Perkins, at linebacker. But they don't really have all the pieces together on that defense to really compete in the SEC. But Garrett Nussmeyer... Their quarterback coming in for Jane Daniels, who won the Heisman last year, I think is going to be a super good quarterback for them. I think they're always going to produce those super good wide receivers. There's two teams in college that you can count on to produce at the wide receiver position. It's Ohio State and LSU. So I don't worry about them too much there, even though they are losing two first-round draft picks in uh wide, at the wide receiver position but they go through this a lot they always find good wide outs um but yeah lsu garrett nussmeyer i think is going to be super good uh next up at number 14 i do have the utah utes and my first big 12 team here on this list i know I'm probably i might get some criticism for that uh having my top big 12 team only come in at number 14 i'm not a big 12 hater actually my favorite teams in the big 12 but i look at it kind of like this LSU, Notre Dame, Missouri. If any of those three teams were in the Big 12, would they be the favorite to win the conference? I think they would be. I think LSU, if they were in the Big 12, I would pick them over Utah, over Kansas State to win the Big 12 championship this year um, in the preseason. So I look at it like that, and that is why every team from 14 to 1 or from 13 to 1 above Utah, I would have as my favorite to win the Big 12 if they were in the Big 12 conference. And if we're doing the power rankings, I kind of have to take that into consideration. Head-to-head, -head, would LSU beat Utah? I think it would be a really good matchup. That's why they're close, 13-14, uh, but I would probably pick LSU. I think they have a super high-powered offense. It would probably be a shootout, honestly, but I think LSU would probably win that. 
But Utah, I still think is a very good team. They're my favorite to win the Big 12 uh, conference this year. Uh, they're returning Cam Rising, who's about 34 years old in his seventh year of eligibility, something like that. And uh, which means he has a lot of experience. Now, if he can stay healthy, that is the big question mark. And Utah usually does have a pretty good defense and a Big 12 that doesn't have a lot of teams with great defenses. So I think that's actually going to help them out a lot. Can they get key stops in some key games? Um, I think Utah definitely the favorite to win the league this year. At number 15, right behind him, another uh, Big 12 team in Kansas State. I think Kansas State's super good team. Avery Johnson. Um, quarterback coming in, super, super uh, highly rated freshman uh, coming out of high school. I think he was redshirted last year, so he's going to be a redshirt freshman this year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kansas State fans, but super good player. I know Kansas State fans are super hyped up about him, and, and I am too. I think he's uh, going to be very good on the run. I think he runs actually like a 4-4-40 four, four, uh, yard dash as a quarterback, which is kind of insane. Uh, they have really good running backs in Gibbons, and they also brought in Edwards over from Colorado. So that's going to be a really good running back duo, and Kansas State's going to have a really good defense as well. So if Utah doesn't win the Big 12, I think it's probably going to be Kansas State. Possibly Oklahoma State. We'll get to them. As you can see, they're right there at 17. Number 16, I do have Oklahoma. Oklahoma's team I think is going to be pretty good. I like Jackson Arnold a lot. I'm excited to see what he can do there at the quarterback position this year. I think they're going to improve on their defense once again this year um, in another year under Burton Venables, who is an excellent defensive mind, um, was the D.C. for Clemson all those years when they were winning national championships. And, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see Jackson Arnold. I think Oklahoma's going to be pretty good this year. I have him at 16. At 17, I have Oklahoma State. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State right next to each other. Sucks we're not going to get to see that game. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see it soon, but no more bedlam for a little while. Oklahoma State, though, Ollie Gordon, their entire offense. I don't have a lot of trust in their quarterback, um, but Ollie Gordon is going to get a ton of carries. He's going to help this offense. There should be pretty good defensively. Um, whenever Mike Gundy does get a senior veteran-led team, they usually compete for Big 12 championships, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're in the mix here. And I do think they are going to have a pretty good record and uh, pre be pretty decent this year. So I have them here at 17. At number 18, I have a team that has some potential but also has some question marks, and that is Tennessee. Tennessee bringing in Nico uh, as a five-star freshman. Um, paid him like $7 million, was one of the first really big NIL deals uh, recently. Um, the past year whenever he was getting recruited now he's coming in as a freshman he is going to take over and no doubt I think that they are probably going to be a top 15 maybe even a top 10 offense in the country and they're probably going to have a pretty decent defense as well but it's all going to depend on that play and you know playing the SEC schedule as well We'll see how they do and how they look on the field. They are definitely a team that's pretty rangy. They could go up from here. They could get close to top 10 or even in the top 10. Or I could see them around 20 to 25. So I got them here at 18. I feel like that's a pretty fair spot for them heading into the preseason. Uh, number 19, I do have Iowa. Iowa, we all know what we're going to get from Iowa. We're going to get a very awful offense and one of the top defenses in the country. And they're going to win 9 or 10 games probably without scoring above 20 points a game so that's kind of what we get from Iowa and it's kind of been the story with them over the past couple of years if their offense can improve just a little bit to scoring like 24 ish points a game they could probably go like 11 and 1 and make the college football playoff I think I was a sleeper to make the playoff this year I think their offense possibly could be improved this year and if it is it wouldn't surprise me at all if they are top 12 and in the playoff by the end of the year. Number 20, I do have Miami. Miami's a team that's kind of getting a lot of hype, and I'm kind of hopping on board with that hype. I'm kind of hopping on the hype train for Miami. I, I've done it before, and they they haven't looked as good as I expected them to, but I think bringing in the transfer in Cam Ward at quarterback is going to help them a lot. I think Mario Cristobal... I think this is going to be his third year at Miami. He's got to get it together now. This has to be the year that they are at least in the running to win the ACC. It wouldn't surprise me if they do win the ACC, especially if Cam Ward is going off this year. And all around, they could have the most talented team in the ACC 
but I have them down here at 20 because they have to prove it to me and show me that they can do it first. So they're coming in here at number 20. At 21, we have another ACC team in NC State. Uh, they brought in the transfer from Coastal Carolina to be the quarterback. Uh, Grayson McCall, I think that he's going to be pretty good for them here this year. And NC State always has a good defense as well. I think they are definitely going to be a top 25 team. And they're another sleeper that could compete for the ACC there. At 22, I have Kansas. A lot of people are scared to rank Kansas because uh, Jalen Daniels, their quarterback, super good, but he has been very injury prone the last couple of years. And Kansas also doesn't have that great of a defense. But I don't really want to project an injury on anybody. I think Kansas is definitely a top 25 team if he is healthy. So I got to put him up here at number 22. They were definitely a sleeper team to win the Big 12 this year. 23, another sleeper team to win the Big 12. We do have the Arizona Wildcats, a new Big 12 team this year. And yeah, they lost their coach, Jed Fish, over to Washington, um, which does kind of suck, but they did get a pretty decent replacement and they did keep their star quarterback in uh, Fajita. So I think that that is huge. And they also uh, brought back T Mac at wide receiver. So having that combo while still having a pretty good uh, head coach coming in, I don't think that they should take too huge of a step back this year. And hopefully he can keep them competing at the level that they were last year. And if so, I think they're definitely a top 25 team. I got them coming in here at 23. 24, we do have USC. Um, USC is definitely a team that ha I've seen a lot of people be ranging up, rangy about. A lot of people don't have them in their top 25. A lot of people maybe even have them top 20. I have them 24. I think they're going to be pretty good, especially offensively. Miller Moss had a really good bowl game last year when Caleb Williams didn't play in the bowl game. And Lincoln Riley, one thing you can count on with him, he's going to have a good offense. I trust Lincoln Riley. I trust Miller Moss. I think he's a really good quarterback. And also Jeremiah Branch. Some of these skill play, uh, position players are going to be pretty good. It's all going to depend on their defense. Heading into the Big Ten Conference for the first year, how is USC's defense going to hold up? That's going to be interesting to see. That's a big question mark heading into this year for the Trojans. But I do got them up here at 24. I think their offense is going to carry. 25, we do have the Louisville Cardinals. Louisville, um, a team that I could definitely see being pretty good. They're kind of similar to Kansas, except they probably have a little bit of a better uh, defense, except their quarterback, who's going to be pretty good. Not as good as Jalen Daniels and probably more injury prone than Jalen Daniels, which is definitely saying something. Um, but I think Louisville is going to be pretty good. Like I said, I don't want to project an injury on anybody, um, but we're just looking at their past and what could possibly happen. Louisville, I think, top 25 team. I got them here at 25. At 26, just outside the top 25, Texas A&M. Texas A&M made a big hire this year in Mike Elko, who, like I mentioned earlier, I think was a huge reason why Duke was uh, winning, obviously, and I think was a home run hire for Texas A&M. I think he is going to be the guy who could really take these resources that Texas A&M are trying to give to their coaches, like they tried Jimbo Fisher, um, but he was just unable to get it done. I think Mike Elko is going to be their guy. I think he's going to be able to get it done there. Um, I think they're going to have a pretty decent year in year one. I don't think they're going to be in the playoff his first year, but maybe by second, third year, I think Mike Elko is going to have the A&M in the playoff. 27, we do have Wisconsin. Wisconsin, year two, under Luke Fickle, who made the playoff as the head coach of Cincinnati. Now he's with Wisconsin, year two. He's got Tyler Van Dyke out of the transfer portal at quarterback. Um, we're, we're going to see what he can do there, but Wisconsin usually has a pretty good defense. Luke Fickle, a really good defensive coach. We'll see if Tyler Van Dyke can kind of revive his career here with Wisconsin. I think it'll be pretty decent. I have him at 27. 28, we do have Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is definitely a sleeper team that a lot of people expect to have a pretty good year this year. Sleeper to win the ACC or at least be competing for the ACC. Um, pretty good quarterback, underrated quarterback in Kyron Jones, Drones. And yeah, I think they're going to be pretty decent. I got them here at 28. 29, we do have Iowa State. Iowa State just all around a pretty consistent team. And I think definitely, again, a sleeper for their conference. And yeah, Iowa State coming in here at 29. 30, I have Washington. Washington's interesting. They were just competing in the national championship last year against Michigan and lost. But they lost their head coach. Their head coach replaced Nick Saban at Alabama. Uh, and Kalen DeBoer. They lost their quarterback. He went to the NFL, Michael Penix Jr. They lost all three of their wide receivers. They lost pretty much the entire team that made the national championship last year is gone, including the head coach. They did make a pretty good hire. They hired Arizona's 
uh, former head coach in Jed Fish, who I think is a really good hire. Now, are they going to be really good in year one? I'm not so sure. I think they're going to be decent, but it's a completely new team. They did bring in a transfer quarterback in Will Rogers, who is really good at Mississippi State. I don't think they're going to be that bad. I think they're going to be around this 30 range, which why that's where I have them. Next up at 31, we do have Kentucky. Bring in Brock Grant Vandergriff from uh, Georgia as their quarterback. Uh, that's going to be interesting there. I think he's going to do a pretty good job. He is a guy who can run, throw the ball at the quarterback position. They're going to be pretty good offensively. Kentucky's always a physical team, um, always a sleeper there in the SEC. Uh, under Coach Stoops that you just can't take lightly. Um, wouldn't surprise me if they crack up into the top 25 after a couple games into the season. Number 32, I have the only group of five team that I have ranked that's not power four, and that is the Boise State Broncos. Boise State going to be super good this year. They are uh, maybe going to have the best team that they've had since they were making New Year's Six Bowls uh, back in like the early 2010s and late 2000s. Um, going to have a super good te team this year. Definitely going to be one of the top contenders to make the playoff from the group of five because we all know the top group of five team gets an automatic lock to make the 12-team playoff this year. I think Boise State could be that team. Nebraska coming in here at number 33, bring in Dylan Riola, five-star quarterback for Nebraska, year two under Matt Rule. Uh, Matt Rule, I think they're going to be pretty good. Uh, take some time to build that up. I think they're going to make a bowl game this year. I think they're going to be at least seven and five, maybe even eight and four this year, all the Big Ten. Coming in here at 33 right here. 34, I do have the West Virginia Mountaineers. West Virginia, I think, is definitely a sleeper in the Big 12. I'm not sure if they can win the Big 12 conference this year. But I think that they could, you know, last year they were 9-4. and four. They had an easier schedule last year. Going to be a tough one here. We'll see if West Virginia uh, can uh, be better than expected. I expect them around 7 or 8 wins, honestly. I am a WVU fan. I think Garrett Green, um, pretty good heading into his senior year. We have an awesome running back duo in C.J. Donaldson and Jaheim White. Going to be an awesome running game. Big question mark around this team is definitely going to be the defense and specifically the secondary that is the big question mark if the secondary can be better than expected i think west virginia could win at least eight maybe even nine games this year and definitely be a top 25 team but for now in the preseason i have them at 34 at 35 i have ucf and gus malzone head coach finally got brought in kj jefferson which is like the perfect fit for what he likes to run as we know, he was the head coach of Auburn when they won the championship with Cam Newton. KJ Jefferson kind of has that Cam Newton build, Cam Newton play style, and we'll see what he can do. KJ Jefferson, another one of those quarterbacks that is injury prone, so hopefully he can stay healthy. If so, I think UCF could possibly be another one of those teams like West Virginia out of the Big 12 who could sneak into the top 25. And my teams to watch that didn't make my cut but definitely got my eye on them to possibly make Power 35 after the first week or two of play, we do have... Liberty, another one of my top group of five teams. I think them and Boise State, definitely the favorites out of the group of five to make the playoff this year. SMU, who has joined the ACC this year, they're getting a lot of buzz. I'm not really buying in on it. I'm kind of selling their stock right now. Um, a lot of people think SMU is going to head right into the ACC and be one of the top contenders. I don't necessarily think so. TCU, TCU is another one of those teams in the Big 12 I think is a major sleeper. And depending on how I see they play in the first few weeks, they may jump up into the top 25. I think they are actually have that type of potential. Rutgers, Rutgers out of the Big t uh, 10, definitely a sleeper in that conference. I think that they could uh, have one of their better years that they've had really uh, in a very long time. Florida, Florida Gators, um, we'll see how they perform. Billy Napier definitely on the hot seat. I still think they're probably a top 40, 45 power rated team. That's kind of where they're at with the teams to watch here. Um, it's going to be tough. They have a really hard schedule, but if they had an easier schedule, you know, I think that they could definitely make some noise. Next up, we do have Auburn. Auburn's another one of those sleeper teams. Um, not really sure what we're going to get at quarterback play with Peyton Thorne, who's another one of those guys who's just playing in his like seventh, eighth year, it feels like, but I, I just don't know if he's going to be the guy for, uh, to be a good SEC quarterback. Um, but their defense and run game should be really good. And Memphis. And Memphis is another one of those group of five teams that I'm definitely keeping my eye out on this year. So that is going to do it for my power rankings for the preseason. Like I said, after week zero, after week one, 
throughout the entire season. Once a week, we're going to come out with our updated rankings, just like we do college basketball as well. So make sure you guys subscribe. We're going to have this and a bunch of other college football, college basketball content here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching.